Hey, my name is Luke Monnington, and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how the gap between open source and proprietary models is closing quickly. And the way we're going to do that is by going through this new model that was released this month called Red Pajama. And what's really interesting about Red Pajama is that they curated a data set that's entirely open source and available for commercial use. They utilize the same process that was used to create the Llama data set, except because this was done completely independently, that means it's entirely open source and they made everything open source and available for commercial use. So I'm going to be reading through this article and providing my commentary, and we're going to be looking at what factors are causing open source to close the gap with big tech. So let's get into it. So before actually starting with this article, I actually wanted to show you a excerpt from a different article. And I'll be linking this article in the description as well. But this part right here seems to really hit home on the importance of creating these legally free commercial open source data sets. So it says, offshoots of the Llama model, which offers restricted access for researchers and was partly leaked on BitTorrent, have the disadvantage of existing in a legal gray zone. Only selected research projects can gain access upon request. The resulting models are neither open source nor suitable for commercial use. Since then, a number of semi-open models have been circulating on the internet, in addition to Llama, such as Alpaca, Vicuna, Lava, and Koala. In addition, numerous offshoots have made use of the OpenAI API to generate synthetic training sets in violation of the US vendor's terms of use. OpenAI prohibits the use of its products to create competing products and reserves the right to take legal action against such projects. It is becoming apparent that this is not a paper tiger and is likely to be adjudicated in the future. For example, Microsoft has begun penalizing customers who develop potential competitors for GPT-4, threatening to restrict their access to Bing search data. Microsoft is the largest funder and major investor in OpenAI with exclusive rights to its models. So based upon this excerpt here, we're seeing that the big companies, especially Microsoft, OpenAI, they're being very protective over their data. And I can understand why they're investing a lot of money and on the cutting edge. But as a result of them being so protective over their data, there's this opportunity in the open source community to be developing models that can compete with the big tech companies. And there are certain advantages to having an open source model as well. Number one is that it can be run entirely locally, which means that you don't have the same issues with privacy and you're not sending your data over the internet. Also, if you work locally, then you don't have to deal with the same filter as you would if you were working with a model on OpenAI, for example. Okay, so with that in mind, let's jump into this article. This article talks about releasing the 3 billion and the 7 billion red pajama insight family of models, including the base, instruction tuned, and chat models. It starts out by saying that the Red Pajama project aims to create a set of leading open source models and to rigorously understand the ingredients that yield good performance. A few weeks ago, we released the Red Pajama base dataset based on the Llama paper, which has galvanized the open source community. The five terabyte dataset has been downloaded hundreds of times and used to train models like MPT, Open Llama, and Open Alpaca. Today, we are excited to release Red Pajama Insight models, including the instruction tuned and chat versions. Now, this sounds very interesting. They are talking about a five terabyte dataset that is open source and has been downloaded and used to train all these models. And so let's take a look at what this dataset actually is. This is a different article from the Red Pajama team, and it goes into what exactly the Red Pajama base dataset is. So what it is, is it's a 1.2 trillion token dataset which they also released with a smaller size as well. And the full data set is five terabytes unzipped on a disk and three terabytes when it's compressed. And it comes from the common crawl data set, C4. It has some stuff from GitHub, also some scientific articles, a bunch of books, Wikipedia, and Stack Exchange. A really important part with generating a data set that's going to get good results and train the next generation of LLMs is that the model is very diverse. So this article is just showing that the data set does come from a wide variety of sources and it was filtered to roughly match the number of tokens that were reported in the Llama paper. Going back to the article, today's release includes our models trained on the Red Pajama base data set, a 3 billion and a 7 billion parameter base model that aims to replicate the Llama recipe as closely as possible. In addition, they're releasing fully open source instruction tuned and chat models. 
And the key takeaways are that the 3 billion model is the strongest in its class and the small size makes it extremely fast and accessible. And they say that it even runs an RTX 2070, which was released over five years ago. When I hear this and I see, oh, it's available on an RTX 2070, that's really great. But also we need to keep in mind that the GPU VRAM size hasn't really increased very much over the past several years. While the model sizes have increased more than a thousand fold, the actual GPU VRAM size on typical consumer level GPUs really hasn't increased very much at all. So when they're talking about a RTX 2070, the most important part in being able to run an LLM on a GPU is being able to fit the LLM onto the GPU. So we need to look at how much GPU VRAM does the RTX 2070 have. And when I check Google, I see that the RTX 2070 has eight gigabytes of VRAM. So although this is really nice that it works on RTX 2070, eight gigabytes of VRAM is still a pretty good amount of VRAM even to this day. For example, the RTX 3050 Ti only has about four gigabytes of VRAM. And the latest, most state-of-the-art GPU, the RTX 4090, for the laptop version only has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So that's only twice as much as the RTX 2070 that was released five years ago. So while this is a great indicator that this can work on a local computer, to be bragging about it working on a 2070 is pushing it a little bit, in my opinion. Okay, next the article says that the instruction tuned versions of the models achieve strong performance on Helm benchmarks. As expected on Helm, the 7 billion model performance is higher than the base Llama model by three points. We recommend using these models for downstream applications with few shot, entity extraction, classification, or summarization tasks. What this means is that we're seeing that the 7 billion parameter model is performing even better than the Llama model on the Helm metric. And you might be wondering, what is the Helm metric? Well, the Helm metric was released in this November 2022 research paper from Stanford University. And essentially what it is, is it's a way to compare the performance of LLMs. Going back to the article, it says that the 7 billion parameter model, which is 80% of the way done training, is already outperforming the Pythia 7B model, which is showing the importance of a bigger data set and the value of the red pajama base data set. This point is also pretty interesting to me because when it says that this 7 billion parameter model is outperforming Pythia 7 billion parameter model, I know that this model actually is based off of the Pythia architecture. So the fact that this is performing better than the Pythia 7 billion parameter model means that it's entirely due to improved data quality and data size, which goes back to the point that I was talking about earlier, that the best LLMs are gonna come from models that are trained on the best data and the most data. We're essentially moving into a period in NLP right now where the quality of a model is more determined by having a better data set than it is from having an improved architecture design. To go on in the article, based on our observations, we see a clear path for creating a better version of the Red Pajama data set, which we will release in the coming weeks, that will go beyond the quality of the Llama 7B. We plan to build models at larger scale with this new data set. We expect differences between the Llama 7B and our replication, which we have investigated below. The biggest takeaway is the demonstration that performant LLMs can be built quickly by the open source community. This work builds on top of their 1.2 trillion token red pajama dataset, Eleuther AI's Pythia training code, flash attention from Stanford and together, the Helm benchmarks from Stanford, and also the Insight program. And they believe that these kind of open collaborations at larger scales will be behind the best AI systems in the future. This is very exciting to be reading because they're talking about having a data set that's even bigger that will also be open source. That's gonna create the next generation of LLMs coming soon, maybe in the next few months. So that's really great to see. One thing to note here though, is that in order to train these models on data sets of this size, it requires a ton of computational power. So when they're talking about getting compute time on the Summit supercomputer within the Insight Program Award, Really, what that's coming from is that they had to apply in order to get access to a supercomputer, and they are training these models on literally thousands of GPUs in order to get them fully trained. So these are certainly requiring a ton of computational power, and it's really great that these models are being democratized and that they're being made available to the general public. To go on with the article, the Red Pajama 3 billion model is the strongest model in its class and brings a performance large language model to a wide variety of hardware. 
Today's release includes the following models, all released under the permissive Apache 2.0 license, allowing for both research and commercial applications. So they released the base model, chat, and instruct for both the 3 billion parameter sizes and the 7 billion parameter sizes. And all of these models are available on Hugging Face right now. In only a few weeks, the support, suggestions, and feedback for Red Pajama from the open source community has been incredible. Based on their learnings, they're also already starting the next version of the Red Pajama base dataset, which will be nearly twice the size of the original V1 dataset. This is a pretty cool graph too, because this is showing the difference in the performance in terms of the loss of the 2.7 billion parameter compared with the 6.7 billion parameter. And we can see that even right from the beginning that the larger model does perform better. And also another key note is that the smaller model reaches a point where its loss function stops decreasing a lot more quickly than the large model. So they were talking about how their large model is 80% of the way done training. The reason that it's only 80% of the way done training is because it takes so long for it to get trained that they just wanted to put this out and they put out the checkpoints, but the model is actually still training. During the Red Pajama model training, we have shared regular updates and both the 3 billion and the 7 billion models have been trained on 800 billion tokens. And they're excited to see that the 3 billion model has stabilized at 800 billion tokens and the 7 billion parameter model continues to improve as it completes training to the 1 trillion tokens. Now let's discuss the 3 billion base model. It was trained over the Red Pajama V1 dataset with the same architecture as the popular Pythia model suite. They chose to start with the Pythia architecture to understand the value of training with a much larger Red Pajama dataset with respect to the current leading open source dataset, the Pile. And also, for your information, the Pile is what was used to train the Pythia models. And also to take a look at what the Pythia models are, essentially this is a repository from Eleuther AI's project, which combines interpretability analysis and scaling laws to understand how knowledge develops and evolves during training in autoregressive transformers. And what they did is they trained a bunch of different size models of transformers ranging from small to very large on the exact same data set. And then they released all of the checkpoints and the data set so that it's entirely open source so that the open source community and researchers can analyze it to understand the differences in performance as we go up in model size. And so the main contribution of Pythia is that everything is standardized. Going back to the article, they're excited to see that at 800 billion tokens, the Red Pajama Base Insight 3 billion has better few shot performance and better zero shot performance compared with open models of similar size, including the well-regarded GPT Neo and Pythia 2.8b. And also on Helm, it outperforms these models by three to five points. On a subset of tests from the LM evaluation harness, it outperforms open models by two to seven points. Based on this, we can see that it's starting to perform pretty well. So then after that, the article goes on to talk about the other 3 billion parameter models. We're going to skip those, but you can check the article if you want to read into those a little bit more. And now we're going to take a look at the Red Pajama 7 billion parameter model. The 7 billion parameter model is still training, uh, as we discussed. It is currently at 800 billion tokens, and they see that the training loss is still decreasing consistently. So that means the performance of the model is still improving as they feed it more tokens in the training set. As a result, they will continue to train it up to 1 trillion tokens. Nevertheless, this checkpoint is quite useful and interesting to build on and can help the community better understand the training process. Therefore, they are releasing three intermediate checkpoints as a preview of the final models. So although the model isn't finished training, they do have checkpoints, which are snapshots of different stages of the model throughout the training process, and those models are open sourced and available. So that's really great to see. And it goes on to say that each of these checkpoints are released under the Apache 2.0 license, which means it's free, open source, and available for use, even commercially. And even at 800 billion tokens, we already see promising results. On Helm, the base model outperforms open models such as GPT-J and Pythia 6.9b by 0.5 to 2.2 points. And on Eleuther AI's IM evaluation harness, it outperforms these models by 1 to 3 points on average. And they also see that compared with the Llama 7b, there is still a quality gap, about 4.3 points on Helm at this moment. So what that means is that although this model is performing pretty well, it's still not quite performing as well as the Llama model. But also we have to remember that it's only 80% of the way done training. Finally, towards the end of the article, they discuss what Red Pajama V2 will look like. And they say that they learned a lot from the community and are working on building out Red Pajama V2 with 2 trillion tokens. So it's going to be at least twice as big 
by taking a systematic approach. They measured the validation loss of different models on different slices of pile, and they see that red pajama lags behind on many slices of pile, especially for those slices that are not directly included in the red pajama data set. Inspired by this, they plan to mix the pile data set into red pajama and form a more diverse data set with even more tokens. And they still need more code. Another immediate to do on their plate is to mix in data from the stack and enrich the GitHub slice of Red Pajama, which contains only 59 billion tokens. Based upon this, we can expect that models trained on the V2 dataset are going to be even more powerful and also are going to have even better skills at coding. With all those improvements together, they're shooting for a 2 trillion token Red Pajama V2 dataset. Next week, they're going to start doing a series of runs to understand the right data mixture and start training new models over the Red Pajama V2. And this article actually did come out one or two weeks ago, so we can be expecting to hear some news from them really soon. So based upon news like this, it sounds like open source is really doing well with closing the gap. And as I discussed in a previous video, a Google AI researcher had recently mentioned that Google has no moats and that they have no secret sauce because the open source community is able to close the gap on them. And I think projects like this really go a long way with getting more powerful AI models into the hands of the general public. With that, I hope you enjoyed this overview of the Red Pajama model. If you enjoyed this type of content, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.